And yeah, let's close this section on pandas uh, by looking at a real-world example. And in this example, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna grab the address of each of these rows that we have in the data frame. And uh, we, we're going to convert it to uh, latitude and longitude coordinates. So geographic coordinates, in, in other words. Now, addresses, they define a unique point on the Earth. So if you pass this address to some service, let's say you, you, you throw it on Google Maps, and Google Maps will point to you, so it will generate a marker that will tell you where this point is located. Now, on the background, that marker actually has a pair of latitude and longitude coordinates. And every point on Earth has this pair of coordinates. And if you follow the section on building web maps with volume in the course, and then you know how, what these latitudes and longitudes, how, how they come in handy uh, when you build applications such as web, web maps or other maps. Now the process to convert from addresses to coordinates is called geocoding. And if you want to convert from latitude and, and longitude to uh, addresses, that is called the reverse geocoding. In this lecture, uh, we're going to be looking at geocoding. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do is we'll add here a column to the data frame, actually two columns, one for latitude and one for longitude for each of the rows. Now, pandas cannot do that directly, so you need the help of another library that is called GeoPy. And you can install GeoPy with pip. So pip install and geopy. And just wait a while. Oh, great. And then, you know, before going ahead and applying the uh, geocoder to uh, my data frame values, I'd like to actually convert a single address, an address string uh, with geocoder. Something you should be aware of is that to use uh, GeoPy, actually to use a geocoder, uh, which is, you know, if you say import geo, oh, GeoPy, and then if you say GeoPy, like that, you'll see that you have a geocoder module among them, uh, which is this one here, so geocoders, actually. And for, for the geocoders to work, uh, you need an internet connection. Because what geocoders will do, it, it will get your address and then it will send that to an online service that uh, has all these addresses in a database. And then uh, for your address, it will uh, calculate the corresponding latitude and longitude values. So you need an internet connection. And yeah, mm, what you normally do is, you know, uh, you want to import from geopy.geo coders import actually there are a few geocoders there but we will use nominatum and then what to do is you know you create a nominatum variable uh, object so you store that object in a variable And once you have that object, then you point to the geocode method of the nominatum object, and you pass an address as a string in there. Let's say 3995, 23rd, uh, then maybe the city, and the zip code, 94114. And if you execute that, uh, you'll uh, get a location a data type there. So all this. And what that includes is, you know, you, it includes the address that you pass there. So this one. And it has also added the United States of America, so the country in here. And you also get the latitude and longitude. And this one here, just ignore that. It's, it's just a response from the geocoder. So it doesn't mean uh, much. Now, sometimes, though, uh, it's rare, but sometimes you may get a non-object. So, for instance, if you pass this address, which probably is not a real address, I'm not sure about that, I don't know, but uh, if you say San Francisco, C 
ta um, If you execute that, nothing will happen. And actually, you, you can see that if you store this in a variable and then print uh, n, uh, this will say that it's a non-object, so it doesn't have anything inside. So yeah, be aware of these uh, scenarios as well. And yeah, we had our uh, working address, uh, this one here. Uh, let's store that in, the, in this variable. And uh, once you have that, to extract the latitude and the longitude, uh, you apply a latitude for uh, the latitude value and a longitude for longitude. And that should do it, because you know uh, n, type n, n is a special object, it's called a location object of GeoPy. So you need to apply those methods. And yeah, that's how you convert an address string to uh, a location, or to latitude and longitude values. But how about converting an entire column uh, of a data frame into latitude and longitude? So we've got this data frame, df equals to pandas the dot read csv, so super dot csv, and this should be an underscore, and let me import pandas first, and print out the data frame. So this is our uh, new data frame. Actually, this is the old one that we've been using. We have uh, five, six addresses there six rows with an address, a city, and state, and country. Uh, now, the geocode method, more or less, it accepts uh, this kind of format. So it uh, expects from you the road name in here, and then the city, and the zip code in here, and the country. So what we can do is uh, we need to construct such a column in our data frame first. And yeah, you can either create a new column or you can edit an existing one. So let's say I'll edit the address, the existing uh, address column. So that would be equal to uh, df address, so this value in here, plus, well, I'll, I'll need a comma in there, so a comma and maybe a space, and plus df city, so a comma between address and city and then another comma, and then plus df state again, and yeah, yet another comma, like that, plus again df, and lastly country. That should do it, df, and yeah, we've got a complete address uh, column in there. Great. And now we need to send this string to the geocode method. And we need to do it for all the rows. Now you're probably thinking of iterating, but with pandas actually you don't need to iterate. I mean pandas is designed in a way that it allows you, it has some methods that allows you to apply a method or a function to all the rows of the data frame without having to write a for loop. And to do that, you know, you need to create a new column. Let's call it coordinates, where you store the, the string. Um, you know this this string in here. So this, uh, actually, it's not a string, it's a location object, but you can store it in your data frame. So we need to store locations for each of the rows. And the way you do that is, you know, you point to the uh, column that you want to pass to your geocoder, and then you use a pandas method called apply. So what uh, method do you want to apply to the values of the address column? Well, that would be n. So n is a nominatum uh, object that we have here. Oh, sorry, it's gnome, sorry. So that would be gnome.geocode. And so the same as this one. So gnome.geocode. But in this case, uh, you don't pass brackets there. 
because the apply method will do it for you. So just like that, and then you maybe you print out the data frame in there and see what you get. I got a service timed out. Mm, uh, geocoder is not working properly. Maybe I have a problem with my internet connection. So if you get this long error, that is not your fault. It's, uh, it's a problem with the geocoder, uh, with GeoPy. I'll try that again. And yeah, this time it worked. It was able to fetch uh, the location objects in here. I mean, you cannot see the latitude and longitude because it's a long string. But if you do it like that, coordinates, you, you get the series for coordinates. And, and yeah, that is not showing it either. Uh, but you can do it like, you know, uh, df coordinates, and then you access the first item only, like that, and then you get the entire text for the location. If you own the latitude, you get latitude only. And that brings us to the point that uh, you may want now to add another two columns in your data frame, uh, where you fetch the latitude and the longitude values. So our data frame is uh, this one at the moment. And what you could do is, you know, you could create a latitude column in there that would be equal to df coordinates apply. You know, you, you cannot ap apply latitude directly in there uh, because you'll get this kind of error that says series uh, has no attribute latitude. So you're applying latitude method to a series. But a series doesn't recognize that. What series recognizes is the apply method. So there you can write your other methods. Now, well, latitude will point to the uh, to the values of this coordinates uh, column, and in, in such scenario, you use you use a lambda function. So, which is an inline method to build a function. So you'd say lambda x, x is a temporary variable there. Mm, you say x latitude. Oh, yeah, let, let's keep it like that for, for now. Uh, df there. And let's see what we got. Well, it says that a non-type object has no attribute latitude. Uh, so, so this can be quite tricky if you're not experienced with geocoding. Uh, yeah, the reason we, we get this is that we have a non-row uh, value in there among our rows and uh, the non-row, uh, which is not a location uh, data type, does not have a latitude method because you know what we did here is we're storing all these values so it is like a loop, we are storing all these values in the temporary x variable and uh, then for each of these value we apply the latitude so what Python will do is uh, it will go through the first uh, row and it will apply the latitude methods to the first row and it will store it in the latitude uh, column. And then it goes to the second value, but in this value latitude is not existing for none, so you get an error. To do that, you could apply a conditional, an inline if conditional. Uh, you say if x is not none else <laughs> none uh, yeah I know it's it's a bit confusing but what we did is you know uh, apply latitude if X is not none so it will apply this method for those rows for those values otherwise it will store none in the current cell of the latitude column so I hope that is clear mm, I'll execute here and yeah, we got the latitude column in there. Great. And we can do the same for a longitude. A longitude and here as well. Mm, yeah, that was quick. And yeah, that's it. You have a latitude and longitude column in your data frame. So please uh, have a second look at what I wrote in here. And if there is something that doesn't make sense, just drop a question. 
and I'll be happy to answer you. So yeah, we have quite a lot of flexibility working with data frames. I hope you enjoy this and uh, I'll talk to you in the next lectures. See you.